Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about Total War Pharaoh to talk about Ramesses and his campaign, specifically his campaign on Legendary Difficulty. I think on Legendary Difficulty this is probably the hardest campaign in the game by far. Because you've got a complicated starting position, you don't have a great early game army in particular, and you are surrounded by foes one way or another. Or rather you have a foes, but they're in the direction the you don't want spirits. to go in. So, let's go over this. Now, as Ramesses, you get the ability of having command that allows you to attack in March stance. Or, if you wait until Shamsu Hor, you get the ability of recruiting Meiji through the special this unit is your recruitment. For that is his benefit. In Ramesses the campaign. The now, another thing to also mention about Ramesses is with regards to his title. He starts with the first among, which gives him a recruit rank plus two and grants attribute Vanguard deployment. He can also get the Sandwalker title if he just spends three points in fortitude. And this applies to all of his generals. Now, this is important because you have a lot of desert, and being able to go into the desert with attrition immunity over there is a significant strength. You do start with a bow, and you can certainly use Ramesses to harass the enemy because you can shoot while moving. Or you could just unequip it and use his melee capability. I mean, if we look at his stats, like without it, he's certainly decent enough in in terms of his melee capability, though of course he is real, realistically going to want a weapon before you switch him out from the bow. So that's probably one of the things you have to keep in mind. Now, you start, th these are the default uh, stats. So you start with 10,000 food, Glory, you start with a lot of about. stone, you start with decent amount of wood, you start with a lot of bronze. There's a reason why this campaign is considered easy. Here's the problem though, with this particular campaign. None of that is really that significant. And the reason it's not that significant is, one, you have no stone in your starting province. In fact, you have not, you don't have much stone around you either. There is some in Per Moon, but if you uh, if you go declare war on these guys early on, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt. And I'll explain why. Now, in terms of unit recruitment, you start with the ability of getting Meiji swordsmen, Meiji chargers, archers, and Raiders. We live in an now, age of prosperity. Swordsmen are not great units because they're light units. They don't have the best. Uh, uh, they don't have the best um, armor in the world. They're not going to be li good line holders. What you probably want to get are major chargers and major arch uh, archers. The chargers, in particular, because Answer they the have mostly armor piercing damage. You also start with two different unicromant uh, buildings, so you get the Meiji office and you get the Sheridan barracks. You don't Destined start with the native greatness. barracks, and nor do you really want to Chosen go for the native Ra. barracks. Like, Meiji, like although the Meiji units are all going to cost bronze, it's not like the units you would get from the native barracks would be the, the ones you would want to get your hands on at the very least. It's not like they would be any different, because if we're looking at the situation over here, the Shasu Warriors, which are the one unit you would probably want to recruit, because they also are going to do pure armor piercing damage, they're also going to cost bronze, so keep that in mind. I'll find a way now, to prove myself. your army is very vulnerable. It's fast, it can do a lot of damage with the chargers, with the archers, but it's going to take a lot of damage in return. Now, you have a couple of benefits to help you out. You worship Ra. And because you worship Ra, you can get, if you pray to Ra, you can get morale. And crucially, you can get damage resistance to missiles. Melee situation is obviously not going to be that great. But you can make your units more resistant to, uh, resistant to missiles if you pray to Ra. And you're probably going to want to uh, take this element on turn 1 if you can, if not on Egypt's turn 2. Glory. One of the things you can do is this. Will yield. Go over here. How to resolve this. I was fated to win. And then start recruiting two units of Destiny Meiji chargers. Bound. Also keep in mind that you do I replenish more if you're in a camp stance, so you may want to put yourself in a camp stance. I will get two units of Meiji chargers. And then once you take a Scott, you want you may want to build a shrine of Ra over here and 
build it as quickly as possible. We certainly have the stone. Uh, the Shrine of Ra is going to cost us just 100 stone. You can speed up construction with gold. And you, you're obvious, obviously your short-term objective is to take your entire initial province. Here's the problem that you're going to have, though. You need resources. And there's no two ways around that. The pr another issue, though, is the Canaanites over here hate you. Like, they utterly despise you. And they are quite likely going to go to war against you. Because they don't like you and they like Sukkot. You're going to wipe out Sukkot. So they're going to likely like Ascalon. Like, even though these two factions start at war with one another, they are quite likely to... Whoever ends up winning is likely to raid you even if you get the non-aggression pact. So... You're in a situation where you really want to wipe out at least the factions that are surrounding this area. And now as for Hathor, you want to take them out for their gold. So you've got three factions, each of which is going to produce a stack against you, each of which is capable of defeating you in a straight up fight. And you're not going to have a good odds resolve result because your units have very light armor. So this is what makes his campaign brutal. You're going to have a lot of battles. My recommendation is fight all these battles initially on your own, including the first one. Minimize casualties as best you can. Try and take Sukkot and try and take these elements as quickly as possible. Now, these two armies may I clash against strong. each other, and you might be able to... If you can manage to take Ascalon early on in a campaign, that's great. So, you know, you, you build as many um, magic chargers... And then you have a choice. You can either go for half or and take the gold mine, but keep in mind you can't ignore the canines, or you can try and rush Ascalon. Now, Ascalon is going to have a pretty solid enough garrison, so you're going to need a good amount of troops to do Ramesses, so. You cannot increase your unit recruitment capacity, unfortunately, in this campaign. But they don't really brothers. start a lot of units, so it's just going to be... And if this army is weakened against the other one, Born and you move quickly enough, this is why taking Sukkot on turn one can be such a significant benefit. Because it would allow Egypt. you to take Ascalon. Like, it would allow you to be able to Never attack Ascalon down. quickly enough. Especially if you, like, fight these battles manually and minimize casualties. Because keep in mind, Dot Resolve is pretty solid in Pharaoh, but it's still going to cause more damage than you would take uh, fighting a battle. Um, manually. The one problem is you don't have a building that increases recruitment slots. That is an issue that you're going to have to deal with because being able to increase recruitment slots would have been very useful in this Destined campaign. Even if you were just recruiting like um, Haribu Militia to just fill up your armies, if you could recruit a lot of them, that would be great. You don't have a great deal of resources, and you want to take Ascalon, you want to take this province, and then make some non... Like, pay the tribute that you're going to need to pay the Canaanites to get what a non-aggression pact. Also, no you may want to get the deal with Bay, because Bay can be an issue, Irsu can be an issue. If you go, if you start going into Canaan over here past that, the Ascalon, like, you might just take Ascalon and sell it to another faction just for some agreement to form a buffer, or you can just take the province over here of Ascalon and just um, hold the line here because these factions here they're not they're not like li li likely to attack you another important benefit of taking Ascalon is you get Canaanite native units over here which are going to give you the melee durability that you need you have the damage but you don't have the durability so shield uh, so it's going to give you um, cell swords or veteran cell swords it, it's going to give you uh, spearmen so Canaan can give you the heavy infantry that you need early on in the campaign. So taking out Ascalon, although it's a difficult battle, may give you a lot of benefits. And then once you do that, or you can do it earlier, you want to take half or it. This is the gold mine you want, and after that, you can take the Sinai province. So you can take these two out these two factions, get some bronze, get some stone, get some food. Now, here's the downside in doing all of this. You're not going to get a legitimacy outside of your initial province. And this is why Ramesses' campaign is problematic, to say the least. You want to get legitimacy because becoming Pharaoh is such a major benefit in your campaign that it, like not becoming Pharaoh in the First Civil War and having to fight the second is pretty devastating. Now, the First Civil War is probably going to last a fairly long time, so you do have time to join it later. But... The more you wait, the harder it is to get that legitimacy, the more you're going to need sacred lands that are to the west. So this is the problem. The enemies you have are to the east, but you want to go west. 
Thing is, the factions to the West, you're friendly with those factions. Also, there's the Mega Alliance of Manifer, the Pharaoh, and his uh, free vassals. So you, you're talking about four factions. While they won't necessarily produce a lot of armies, like Manifer himself only has like 10 the units over here. Though they are elite units, these are not weak units. Like, if you face these guys in battle, like, you may want to bring uh, a huge amount of force over here. But what I would say in this campaign is going for Ascalon, then going Hathor, then going Sinai, and then declaring war on Per Amun. And one of the things you can ch do to cheese it is like if you declare war on Per Amun and you take one of the settlements, there are chances that they might be vassalized by Manifer because he's the only one that has the capability of doing so. So he, he might offer them that. If he does offer them, you'll have a choice of either a peace or declaring war, but you'll only declare war on him not on his vassals. It's a way to get past the problem of having to deal with four factions at the same time. So if you can deal with Metaphor, who only has this small army and he doesn't can have much of an economy, actually, protection. he doesn't have a lot of resources. If you can take all of this territory, if you can take a lot of this territory, maybe not the capital, because it is a pretty substantial, because it is going to have a fairly substantial army defending it. Like, this is a, the similar problem to Ascalon, but at least with Ascalon, um, you might take advantage of these two factions fighting each other, whereas with Menefer, he's always going to have at least some units in uh, defending cunning. his capital. And that's going to be a bit of an issue. But you, if you can claim this territory, then you can get started with the campaign. It is a brutal start, however. In terms of royal decrees, uh, my recommendation would be going with influence. So getting that one influence, maybe getting a second god slot so you can get multiple gods or going for experience per turn can be useful to get those uh, armies out. Maybe even going for experience first because you may want to increase your bronze capability and then going influence getting a second god dedication slot. And what you do after that is your personal decision, like going for a bit of happiness in your faction capital province and then getting stone. Once you have stone capability can be really, really useful. In the long term, things like sculptors of opinion can be pretty useful, like influence for province with monuments that can be uh, useful to get your hands on or martial mobility for recruit rank. Getting higher recruit rank can be very, very useful. One particular useful thing is to ultimate, like one of the things you might want to look for in the long term is like training mandate power. As for ancient legacy, I would probably recommend the caravans. And let me just show you how this all can unfold because I've been playing a campaign as Ramesses um, over here. So this is turn 27. I want to point out that this is a customized campaign, but turn 27, I've been able to achieve a heck of a lot more in other campaigns and every other campaign than Ramesses. It is the kind of campaign where even we're giving yourself a significant amount of resources early on is still going to be complicated to deal My with. So name will be this is the campaign situation. As you can see, I've recruited a bunch of veteran uh swordsmen, um, Canaanite shield bearers, cell swords, elite mage archers, and that's just one army. I do have lower upkeep in this campaign. Ramesses Hit the part. and two, uh, Proud, Ramesses and Egypt. another army are over here sieging Manifair, and I've declared and I've taken all of this. The vassals that the Pharaoh had have joined the war over here in this campaign, though they didn't do so initially. So I had time to build up, uh, to build up my force and I didn't have to deal with their armies. So I've only been, like I only had to deal with one stack of 10 destiny. troops and now I get to deal with the garrison over here Take them of down. the capital, which is certainly decent enough garrison especially if you're Keep rushing uh, trying to take it recommendation with sieges you be careful about sieges like don't attack a wall settlement if you only have my one piece of siege equipment dot resolve result of sieges will increase and yeah we have the civil war over here uh i'm in mess is currently winning even though I've literally taken all of this territory. So, I, so my initial goal was like, yes, I took Ascalon, then I took Hathor, then I moved into the desert, as I mentioned. And after I'm done with Memphis, basically, I'm probably either going to go down the Nile 
or I'm going to start wiping out these factions over One here, or maybe decay. go into the desert to get some more bronze, some, some more stone, but keep in mind I do need to get legitimacy, so I'm going to need to get some of these lands regardless. But hey, there's some gold over there, can be obviously very useful. I would advise not wiping out the, t the lower Nile factions, like the, yes, they are lower Nile, the lowest of the Nile like where the Nile ends and the Mediterranean, I would advise now wiping them out initially because there is a high chance that, you know, sea peoples are going to attack. Well, another problem that Ramses has to deal with, he is the prime target for sea peoples. He's got all of this coastline to defend. He's got Canaan ha that hates him. He's got the sea peoples that are going to attack him. He wants to expand into Egypt, into Upper Egypt, as far as Upper Egypt can go. But at the same time, he has to defend this entire front line is a pretty brutal situation. I'm not quite sure how Creative Assembly decided that this was the easiest campaign in the game. Because I'm going to tell you, like, if you're playing on lower difficulty, I can understand it, but on a high difficulty, this is uh, brutality. And, and brutality. I don't actually None enjoy it. Deny me now. Because you... The unit roster that you have, your faction-specific unit roster, is just not really that great, like, looking at uh, the situation. Like, even... Even with elite mage warriors with axe and uh, mage spearmen, they're just not really that great units, and you're gonna have um, you're gonna have quite a few issues uh, with that. Or if we're looking at uh, Sheridan headquarters, yeah, a bunch of light infantry units, not not really fond of that. If there's a lesson from Troy, is light infantry is not great to use in a campaign. Like Seti is not necessarily in a best in a better situation in terms of that, but he doesn't have to defend a massive coastline, he doesn't have to deal with Canaanite factions, but also at the same time having to deal with expanding into Egypt. And keep in mind, this is painful even if you lower your upkeep, give yourself far more starting resources and so on and so forth. My right and the vanilla experience is, is brutality. Uh, brutality, at least on legendary. Lower difficulty, different discussion. But I would say every other campaign is far easier. That's just my opinion right now. And I've tried all of them to a degree. I will out a now, sure, I've gotten to the point over here, like if you overcome the initial part, the initial challenge, you can end Egypt's up in a pretty decent position. And the ability of attacking while in Never mark stance is uh, always a nice benefit, I would argue, that you can have in this campaign. Is the glory. But yes, armored units do me. matter, and I wish CA had realized that particular aspect when when designing this game's balance, because unfortunately, it's still something that is relevant in auto resolve. You're not gonna have a great auto resolve for a situation by default, like you're gonna take quite a bit of damage so it's something you've got to be aware now this is not necessarily exclusive to Ramesses of course it's like other campaigns um, other Egyptian campaigns may have a similar uh, problem in their uh, in their campaigns like they there might be a similar situation that they have to deal with but the other Egyptians, they're fight. The other Egyptian campaigns, they're fighting other factions that have that kind, of same kind of dynamic with their army. So it's not necessarily, uh, it's not like they're fighting super heavily armored units. You've got Canaan to deal with, and they have have more heavily armored units than you do. One thing you can take advantage of, like once the core system becomes you available, is you can go right and places. get some Kushai mercenaries from. Of uh, from Amun Mess, and you can hire those units in your armies over here, for instance. So, like, if I just get rid of these, these you can get some Kushite cause. spearmen, which do have my a decent level of, of durability, and use them in combination with you your Magi chargers to do a good amount of damage in a fight. So, there Destiny are some choices me, available. I am always keep that in mind. I there are some, some decisions that you can make as a player. And look, if you can manage Only to take the capital, you are certainly going to end me. up in a much, much, much better position than you otherwise would be. But it is complicated to deal with all of this, and you do have a lot of opponents that you may have to tackle. Kwasin here, signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.